Over the last couple of years meeting with Randy, I've learned more than a few things. But the one thing I've learned that's influenced all the rest is that Randy makes it easy for you to talk to him. Many people in the community know him as the owner of Sherry's Studio. He was in the mall for many years and moved downtown a few years ago. Many others know him from his work with organizations such as San Juan College, San Juan Safe Communities, Leadership San Juan, Path, and more. Still others know him as the guy who helps get your business running smoothly by meeting with your staff. I know him as a friend. Our conversations range from philosophical to business operations to not safe for work. <laughs> no matter the topic, I always have a great time chatting with Randy. Today, we're going to discuss influence. You might think you know what that means, but you might be surprised to know that you, you influence absolutely every situation and environment in which you're involved. We've tried to have this conversation in the think tank before today, but we're always rained out. I know the weather in the truck will be great. I wonder if the weather outside the truck will cooperate this time. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in... Ken's Think Tank. We're ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. What do you think? Take two? I try not to think. <laughs> so this is the second time we've tried this, right? Yes. Actually, third if you want to be technical. We just didn't try it the second time. That's we right. canceled it the second time. That's right. <laughs> For the same reason, we tried it the first time it didn't work out. It was an act of God. It was. It was like... Uh, there's something you're not telling us. The beginning of the great <laughs> flood is what that right. <laughs> first time was. So I was figuring, based on that second time that we decided not to go for it, <laughs> is the universe trying to say something? That's right. Are they saying that, one, I'm, I'm not supposed to have you as a guest on here? Or are they saying that perhaps our conversations we normally have aren't ready for public Public, public ears, could yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that. We're yeah. passing. We're passing the mall. Your old home. Many years. Man, there. Many years. Yeah. Six, Sixteen. And and 16 actually many years, years ago there. as well. So right? it was. Let's see. We moved out of the mall in uh, let's see, 2011, I believe it was, or 2012, one of those. Two. Okay. Yeah. Moved downtown. Sherry's yeah. Sherry Studio. Great location, yeah. Sold that uh, in May of last year. So uh, I've just got one business now. Cool. <laughs> and that one business now is Randall Large Consulting. Yes, it is. Perfect. You've also been on a ton of boards. Like a crazy amount of boards. Well, I over the years I have. You know, I'm pretty old. So you, know, <laughs> you end up serving You're your ancient. <laughs> I used to, says the guy with all the gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, um, the first board I think I served on was uh, Path, uh, People Sitting in the Homeless. Cool. Uh, Leadership San Juan uh, was another board I served on. Uh, let see, uh, there was a School to Careers board that was created uh, years ago that I served on. Uh, the San Juan County Partnership Board. I served on that one, the San Juan Safe Communities Initiative. Right. So it's not a crazy amount. It's not like a, a Scott Miglin amount. But, but you know. <laughs> that guy is involved in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he is. He really is. So we just passed your old new, your new old home, right? Yes, Sherry Studio. Sherry, Sherry it's, Studio. Uh, Orchard and Main Street. Right. Amber Wilkins uh, bought it and uh, is doing a great job. Matter of fact, she's so much better of a photographer than I ever was. So. I love the business. It was a great 20 years, um, uh, but it was time to give it to somebody else who was exciting and passionate about photography. And, Very cool. And I, I, I hadn't taken pictures in years. I know I had. I hired photographers. I just pretty much managed the business. And, uh, so it was. It was good to see somebody who loved photography take it over right. and uh, keep it alive and growing. So. I think she'll do great. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> okay, good job. What, what would you like? Something cold. What do you recommend? Something cold. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I didn't see that was you over for a second. <laughs> so, I, uh, what, what do you have that's cold that would be cold refreshing? Delicious? Yeah. Whipped cream? No. 
Okay. It'll make me look froofy on the, on the <laughs> video I'll, I'll we're shooting. It, I won't make it too froofy. Okay, all right. <laughs> not, not too girly, I promise. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, a mocha, regular. Regular uh, mocha? Yeah. Hot. Hot. yeah. While waiting on our coffee, Randy and I discussed current and future sponsorships for Ken's Think Tank. At the moment, 505 Motorsports right here in Farmington is a sponsor of, of the show. I got my truck there. They gave me a killer deal on it. Clay and his crew are top notch. I recommend them. Drop by and see them. Oh, wait. You made it all creepy. Oh, I did. Look, at, here's a picture of it. That's okay. Woohoo! Coffee. Coffee. And... <laughs> Um, ice cream that looks like coffee or tastes like coffee. <laughs> so <laughs> you got the decorative version. Don't judge version. me. Because so we're 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 talking about influence too today, right? Mm -hmm. That's our topic. Yes, influence. So influence, like, um, so you you have a you you have a, a way of describing influence that people wouldn't normally think about. Most people, I would think, would think about, okay, how do I influence somebody to Right. Blank. Right. Well, the the, uh, the way I, I coach people on understanding influence, and it's directly tied to responsibility, um, is if you imagined a pond with a surface as smooth as glass, mm -hmm. and you threw a pebble into that pond, ripples would come out from where the pebble hit the water. Um, we're all that pebble. We influence every environment of which we are a part. And so anywhere you go, you're influencing that situation. Right. Um, with that understanding that, that there's no way for you not to influence a situation that you're a part of, once you have that responsibility, or excuse me, once you understand the nature of that, you really have a responsibility to be very careful about the influence that you're exerting into the environment. Everything you do creates ripples. Everything you don't do creates ripples. And so once you understand that, especially if you're in a leadership position, uh, it makes you a little bit more careful and uh, a little bit more self-aware about about your actions and how they can mm -hmm. you know maybe do harm or work against the outcomes that you're trying to achieve so most people underestimate their influence that they the influence they have um, so maybe somebody comes into the office in a bad mood right. and they've just actually influenced that office place you with their with their energy their bad mood yeah. their yeah. their energy that's right uh, and it can trigger all kinds of things uh, in, in others, depending on their own level of comfort and their own level of confidence. So, you know, if, if you're having a bad day or you're kind of upset about something and so you're you're not saying anything, you're maybe just quiet because uh, you're, you're focused on the internal dialogue that's going on and you're, you're kind of wandering through your thoughts. And, and someone else who maybe is a little bit insecure might automatically assume that you're upset with them, <laughs> right. and uh, and that will influence their behavior. Right. And so you can say, in turn, "I didn't say anything. How did I influence this environment?" Well, that's how right. you influence the environment by not saying anything, especially if you normally do say something. Right. So I, I and then that person being influenced and feeling that way is going to then continue that influence. That's right. And keep propagate propagating it. So ripples will come out from them, and ripples right. will come off from whoever they interact with. Before you know, you got people surfing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or you got a, a tempest in a teapot going on. It's yeah. Boiling, yeah. water thrashing everywhere. So, yeah, that's that's why I tie it to responsibility. Is we all have a responsibility to understand how we influence our environment and to first of all do no harm, but secondly to uh, try to influence our environment in ways that help us achieve the goals that we're, mm -hmm. we're trying to achieve, the outcomes that we're shooting. So uh, uh, an employer may call me up and say, I've got a problem. I, my employees are have a bad attitude. They're not showing up for work on time. They're, they're uh, uh, not meeting my expectations. I need your help. And a lot of times they'll call me and want me to visit with the employees. And so the first thing I do is say, well, how about we start with you? And, uh, and so I'll ask them a few questions and they'll describe a, a situation that happened and I'll find out how they responded to that situation. And, and through that coaching session, help them understand how they actually are reinforcing right. the behavior that they don't want. They helped create that environment. They have influenced it without really recognizing it. So what would be an example of, of someone um, encouraging, or, you know, rewarding that type of behavior and not knowing that that's what they're doing? Well, the, the, the pivot behavior that I really coach people on is 
is using comfort and discomfort to shape behavior. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be comfortable. No one wants to be uncomfortable. And so you can use that. So, for example, uh, an employee comes in late and the supervisor says, hey, you're late. Why are you late? And uh, they say, oh, well, this happened and this happened and this happened. You know, they gave several excuses. And so when the employer asked them, why are you late or, or said, hey, you're late, that created discomfort. And so when the employee gives an excuse, uh, the employer might say, ah, it's okay, don't worry about it. You know, what? <laughs> you created worry and then you told them don't worry about it. Right. Why did you take them off the hook? You set the hook, right. now you're releasing them. So you gotta let that discomfort happen so that it can drive changes in behavior because generally discomfort leads to change. Uh, so a lot of people don't recognize how and, and, and how how they influence those situations, and uh, it makes them feel uncomfortable to do that. Right. So to to confront someone's behavior if they're not meeting your expectation is automatically going to create discomfort in you and in them. And the one thing that the leaders have to be willing to do is to suffer through that discomfort so that they can achieve a change in behavior. Right. That's hard to do. Because if you if you do that right, then you're only suffering through that discomfort for a small amount of time until right. the situation or situations have corrected themselves, and then you're happy. <laughs> right. That's right. And you've actually conditioned or you know shaped that other person's behavior. Right. If they recognize it, that you are going to confront problems whenever they occur. Sure. They're probably not going to present as many problems because they understand every time you're going to confront it. Right. I mean, kind of on a basic level, we're all mice, right? We want the cheese. That's right. And we want to avoid the cat. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I teach people to manage themselves and lead others. Man self-control, self-awareness, self-management are the keys, I think, to being an effective leader. Yeah. And uh, no boss should be able to be uh, made angry. Right. You have to control that because if if I know that I can say or do something that's going to make you angry, <laughs> that means I'm controlling you. Yeah. And if you have an employee who kind of likes control, <laughs> right. you're basically saying, hey, I'll, if you want to control the situation, just make me mad and boom, <laughs> you're in control. Now I'll yell and I'll scream and I'll threaten, but uh, bottom line is there's something below their level of awareness that's right. driving their need for control. So, uh, you know, You're reinforcing that behavior. As a, I was just thinking of children. Children are masters at that. That's right. And uh, I, I used to do that to my poor mother. I, I knew what bush, what buttons to push, and I always also knew what line not to cross. That's right. So I would push the buttons and not cross the line and drive her <laughs> insane. <laughs> We're not talking about just work environments and business and everything else. In fact, a lot of the things that you do they apply to your life in general, sure. not just your work life. You bet, you bet. So, and that includes influence. I mean, you can influence your family right. in the same way. That was probably the funniest. It wasn't funny at the time, but uh, uh, when I was 11 years old, I was playing uh, Little League, and there was a girl I had a crush on showed up for a game, and uh, I was pitching, and uh, I just wasn't pitching very well. So the coach pulled me out and said, hey, you're gonna, Catch. We didn't have enough players to have somebody in the wing, so I had to switch with a catcher I'd never caught before. And so he, uh, we switched out uh, uniforms and or outfits or you know all the catcher's gear, and I'd never put a cup on before. And so I put the cup on the outside of my underwear, not knowing that's not where it goes. And uh, so you know we threw a few practice pitches I'd never caught before. Uh, and so it was like, uh, eh, I'm not quite sure, but you know, I was getting my bearings pretty good. And so we start the game, and all of a sudden, I feel a little slippage on that cup. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like panicking. Okay, oh, no. throw some strikes. <laughs> let's, let's go three and out here. Let's go three and. <laughs> it just kept on drifting. Every time I stood up to throw the ball back to the pitcher, it would slip a little bit more. <laughs> and I was just hoping nobody would notice this huge knot on the inside of my thigh between my crotch and my knee. <laughs> But the uh, umpire called timeout, and uh, I had to readjust it in front of everyone, including that girl I had a crush on. So it was yeah. terribly embarrassing. But, uh, <laughs>
That's awesome. Probably ever since then I haven't had enough shame to be embarrassed. <laughs> right? <laughs> it is good to get those things out of the way. Yes, so early on. You can look back and go, well, at least it wasn't bad as that one. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> 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 you should have stopped me. Let me push that brake. Go on. <laughs> go on, genius. Come over. There you go. Well, thanks for the influence. You betcha. <laughs> appreciate it, man. I always appreciate it. Our talks are always way cool. Yeah. They so. Are. And we kept it clean, y'all. Yes, we did. Are you proud? <laughs> and, and we didn't die. We almost killed one oh! person. Me. Just because <laughs> that car was on this side. Right. <laughs> it was on your side. <laughs>